Steven. So I'm starting a little bit early, so <laughs> I'm sure people will start to trickle in. Um, but if there's anything you want to look, um, my main video is on my phone, so I can move around pretty easily. Um, and I've got a table set up uh, that it's a black background, so easy to see color combinations. Oh, much love from Pennsylvania too. Hope you're staying safe. So, Let's try that now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Apparently, I think I might have been muted. The dark gray. So. So lead, I think, is the dark gray. I'm using new software. Um, so the dark gray is, is lead. And I need to see if I can flip my camera. There we go. So this is getting, it's pretty accurate. It's a little washed out because it's black on a blackish tabletop. Now, is it going to be color work or do you just need a solid color? Back to me. So I only have three skeins of the lead right now. Um, it's a color I can easily dye to order. So, um, the three skeins I have is going to be about 840 yards that I have on hand. Um,
but I can always dye um, another batch. So similar to Nick's Star Wars sweater, I think that took about four skeins for the body um, and then just one skein for the color work. Um, and that was for a 42 inch chest. Me answering questions, Nick. I'll get it to her. Yeah, just email me and we'll set it up. Um, so the email is shop at hipstrings.com. And now I'm gonna turn the camera around so I can give you guys a little studio tour. So, we'll start at the beginning. Uh, for the color work, a lighter gray, I have an Argent, which is a pale silver. Um, or you could do the Bone, which is the undyed base which um, is kind of an oatmeal color. So, when you come in the shop, I'm on the second floor. This used to be what would have been like the foreman's office in a, uh, in a steel factory. So, come up. Here's all the Versard weaving yarn. We have 8-2 cotton, 8-2 um, tencel, some undyed. And 8-4. And there's us and Kotlin. Then this is double minor. And then this is assorted fingering weights. I need to put back up some that I was photographing. Um, but this is Discourse, which is our superwash. Um, BFL, uh, Targi Sock, which is, I'm just starting to um, dye it variegated. It's the same base yarn as Double Minor, but I'm dyeing it now in our variegated colorways. And then Extra Credit, which is Superwash BFL and Nylon, and the Nylon's a trilobal nylon, so it has just a hint of sparkle. And we have Minis, um, mostly Discourse, a little bit of Extra Credit. This is kind of assorted. We have some of the uh, hip string signature blends, uh, the colors from the color box. Um, we do unicorn fiber products. The last little bit of um, ivory tower, which is going away. So let me turn around. We'll go to more yarn. So then here's all of buoy. So on the top is buoy fingering. And then buoy DK. And then this is Polworth DK. And then here is double major. And we're starting to do some variegated colors on the on the Targi Sport, which is the same base as double major. The last little remaining bit of gifted, a lot of it is in gifted trios, which are you know you get three skeins for 40 bucks and i have some of those combos listed on the website so it's not even really a mystery um this is the bfl silk lace uh both some semi solids and the one-way speckle gradient then there's targi worsted and then the new merino bulky and you can see some of our louette products <laughs> so this is back where some of the magic happens. Um, I haven't gotten to work much in the studio over the pandemic. Um, so mostly it is a place to hold everything and then my assistant, Sam, comes in and does prep work. Um, so. so here we have different naturally colored cottons and then some hand dyed cotton. <laughs>
buoy fiber naturally colored wools I'm gonna take a little break um, Nick is telling me that the stream is lagging a lot so I'm gonna see if maybe changing to my laptop will fix the lag let's try this again Let's try this again. Um, I plugged in the phone, so maybe it has a little bit more juice, and but we won't be able to walk around as much. I should be able to show you the rest from where I'm sitting. So then, yeah, so there's the buoy fiber, then all of our signature blends, almost all of them, and then hand dyed fiber and then our merino color packs and then i'm going to clip you guys in turn around the camera sorry there we go um and see if we can't keep this behaving <laughs> Thanks for your patience, everyone. So if you haven't um, seen, we put a little 15 minute video together for the virtual marketplace today. I put the link in the comments uh, and it's a nice little introduction to all of our yarns, kind of what we do, tools. I didn't show you tools because actually all the tools are living at my house right now because I'm shipping everything from home. Um, and so it's just easy. They don't take up a lot of space, unlike all the fiber in the yarn. So the tools have just been living at my house uh, to make it easier for shipment because otherwise I have to um, come to the studio, pick all the orders for a day and then bring it home to then pack up. So things are a little, shipping a little bit slower, but only really about a day or two slower than they used to be. Um, but it allows us to keep everybody who's associated with hip strings safe. Um, Usually the, during the summer, I'd be bringing my kids to the studio uh, while I worked, but uh, we're trying not to bring the kids to the studio, so they haven't been in the studio um, for months. And also, if you watch the video, you'll find our secret word, and if you watch five of the um, vendor videos and get their secret words you can enter a giveaway um, for the super summer knit together and that's open to anyone the entire public <laughs> I thought you might Rebecca I'm hoping the AC keeps up in the studio to let me keep wearing this um, I forgot to wear it for 
I really wanted to wear it for the um, marketplace video and I totally forgot so uh, the sweater to give you more details this is it's a strange brew sweater by Tin Can Knits um, but instead of having any color work in the yoke, the yoke is actually just um, a pair of skeins of, of double major. So this is one, well, when you buy double major, this yoke is what you would get because it has two kind of matching 50 gram skeins. So it's one set and then the other one. And then the base, the rest of the yarn is Raven in Targi Sport and I just listed that today on the website as a die to order so basically any of our double major skeins that are with Raven um, you could make your own sweater like this so we have like let me look there's Raven and Green Fairy Raven and Fur which is a blue green um, I think Raven and Ocean Raven and Cherenkov Radiation which is a turquoise uh, this is Raven and Amethyst uh, there's Raven and Fuchsia, which is a bright pink. Raven and Flame, which is a red. Um, and Raven and Sunshine, I think, which is uh, yellow. So I think this is a, a 42 inch. And so it takes one skein of double major. And then I think it took probably three or four skeins of the Targi Sport. Probably more like I don't know, maybe a little bit more than three. <laughs> so trying to play with um, using my gradient skeins in, in new and interesting ways. So the Targi Sport, it is listed as a sport uh, weight yarn and makes super fast, squishy um, sport weight socks. But you can't, because of Targi is so bouncy and will take up room, you can use it as a DK weight sweater yarn and it knits up beautifully at five and a half stitches to the inch. Um, so it's a really flexible yarn in that way. So, <laughs> Rebecca's grabbing the yardage because Rebecca's the one who uh, made the, knit the sample for me. So I didn't knit it myself. I, I farmed it out because sometimes there's not enough time uh, in the day to make your own sample knits. And you could also reverse this so that it would it would go from um, black fade to mostly purple, then mostly purple and fade to mostly black, and and kind of the inverse of what this yoke is. And I don't seem to have my baby surprise jacket. Or no, I do. So this is the same kind of concept, but with the baby surprise jacket. And I'm sorry if there's lag. I don't know. Let's hope that we can I'm going to close my laptop and see if Maybe there's the chance that it's eating up all the bandwidth. So.
I have not shown the new fiber yet, so um, give me a second. Um, I actually brought it all back this morning with the samples. Um, Okay, so for the Pittsburgh collection, um, it's been around for a while, but we retired four of the colors. Uh, the two that are remaining are Carrie Furnace, which is a Bluefish Leicester Tussa Silk Black Welsh Wool Zwarbles and Shetland blend. And then Warhol. Which is Shetland um, bamboo and mulberry seed. So and then the new ones are, this is Neon at Noon. So this turns out a really grungy pink. There's pink bamboo um, along with all naturally colored wools. And then there's Sari Silk in it, which gives you pops of all sorts of little bits of color. So grungy pink with pops of color. Uh, so it's neon at noon because before the Clean Air Act, the air pollution was so bad in Pittsburgh that you had stone buildings that basically turned black from the smog. Um, even indoor, there's a mural inside the Carnegie Museum of Natural History um, and it basically the air pollution turned it almost unseeable. They cleaned it back in the 90s and they left one part that you can see how it was before. Um, sorry, I'm having trouble seeing comments because of issues with the software. <laughs> But now Pittsburgh, we still suffer from air pollution problems, uh, mostly because of um, U.S. Steel not actually wanting to do the um, proper upgrades to their coke uh, plant um, and would rather pay the fines. But generally, the neon lights don't switch on at noon because it's that dark from the smog. Uh, Next one is Bicycle Heaven. So this is named after um, a bicycle shop that sells vintage bicycles in a neighborhood called Chateau. It's on the north side of Pittsburgh, which used to be Allegheny City. Um, it was part of a very thriving uh, African-American neighborhood. So one of the retired Pittsburgh blends was Hill District, which was another African neighborhood that 
in the 40s and 50s was basically a lot of it was seized by eminent domain and demolished in order to create what was the hockey arena um, and as well as building some highways that basically shut off that neighborhood from downtown Pittsburgh so the story of Chateau um, it was part of a neighborhood called Manchester um, and then in the 1960s they decided to build what uh, one of our highways route 65 through the middle of the neighborhood uh, splitting it in half they named the side closest to the river Chateau and nowadays Chateau has a handful of residents it is mostly warehouses um, it is now the home to the casino and the science center um, so it's another example of african-american neighborhoods in pittsburgh um, basically being destroyed um, for the sake of new roads and better things for other people And then this is um, Duquesne Incline. Uh, it is BFL, Shetland, and Zwarbles. Um, so the inclines are basically an angled railway that goes up the side of Mount Washington. So Mount Washington is um, on the south side of the Monongahela River, which is the river that comes to the south, um, Mount Washington almost immediately rises up. Uh, and so there are these two inclines. There's the Duquesne Incline and the Monongahela Incline, and they were used for public transportation for workers to come from the residential area of Mount Washington to then be able to access downtown Pittsburgh. Mount Washington was actually one of the first coal mines at you know, near the when they first discovered coal near Pittsburgh, um, and now nowadays it is the best, one of the best views of downtown Pittsburgh. Um, so it, it is still the inclines are still running. They are 19th century cable cars, um, and they are bright red with like gold trim, um, and it's an absolutely wonderful way to see uh, downtown. Very few people use it for. Uh, you know, public transportation now. It does look like Warhol. So Warhol, I'll, I'll, Warhol, you have the black Shetland and then your pops of color are lime green and like clementine orange and kind of a very cool red and pink. Um, I don't have the sample for Warhol. Um, Duquesne Incline is, it is all wool. It doesn't have bamboo or silk in it. And it is primary colors. So it is uh, your, your naturally black wools and then red and yellow. And then the last one, is art glass it is based on a chihuly piece so the Phipps conservatory which is one of my favorite places in pittsburgh every year they do an exhibition with art glass in amongst the plants um and so this is based on a chihuly exhibition which was i think in 2007 and I have a photo of the piece this is inspired by. Um, and so this is super, mostly super fine merino, a little bit of regular merino, and um, pearl viscose. So it spins up. So the pearl viscose spins up almost exactly the same as mulberry silk. So this is super soft and squishy. And I've had Supernatural was another blend that was inspired by glass, an art glass installation at the Phipps. So 
It's a recurring theme. <laughs> And then once Carry Furnace and Warhol sell out, then I'll be replacing those. <laughs> and to go back, uh, if you want to know the stories behind the other two, uh, so Warhol, uh, Andy Warhol is a Pittsburgh native. Um, and it is based off of one of his flowers, um, screen prints. So, uh, and then Carrie Furnace, Carrie Furnace is, oh gosh, I forget the, it was one of the furnaces for the Homestead Steel, so the home of U.S. Steel originally in Pittsburgh. Uh, the Cary Furnace, um, it's still standing. It's in urban decay, and but you can visit the site. Warhol versus... <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the sample for Warhol. Um, so one of the things about Warhol versus Duquesne Incline, there's more color blending that's gonna happen in spinning with Duquesne Incline because it's all wool. Uh, because Warhol is um, natural black wools with thin colored bamboo and, um, and silk, the there's more differentiation in the final yarn between the bamboo and the silk versus the wool. So the colors pop more, whereas this blends more. Um, it's hard to get the light to behave where I am. But the Warhol is kind of, it has more pops of color than Duquesne Incline. There is actually no orange in Duquesne Incline. Um, if you're noticing any orange, it's just from optical blending of the fiber. I can turn off the AC, but if I die in this sweater from heat stroke, you're to blame, Dave, okay? Yeah, so Warhol has shiny bits, whereas Duquesne and Klein is all wool, so it is more matte. Okay, and then I know there was a request to see some of the Tour de Fleece colors. Um, so give me I can keep the AC on. Let me figure out how to turn off the vibration. Okay. I think I turned off notifications.
It is interesting that you are hearing a chime for my notifications because I'm not hearing a chime for my notifications. <laughs> now I turned on do not disturb, so hopefully there's absolutely no notifications or vibration happening with my phone now. Okay. That's yarn. So. I don't have the cotton with me. Um, but, so this is Tour de Fleece colorway. It's called La Route de Alpes. Um, uh, it is available for pre-order through next Saturday, even though um, the tour ends tomorrow. But I'm awful with dates and, you know, dates don't really matter anymore. Um, most of it is died and in stock so it will be shipping in less than two weeks um this is the targi sock um so mostly blue and a kind of purplish blue with red going into a pale orange there's that um, and then on fiber it's dyed in a gradient the cotton to this is the superwash domestic wool so they're not in equal the colors aren't in equal proportions uh, this was inspired by a Tour de France poster I think from 1937 it's up in the product listing um, on the website but I have I think about six different fiber bases for this so there's super wash um, domestic wool there's Falkland there's Targi bamboo silk there's super fine merino silk there's upland cotton and then there's Targi sock the sock um, it's not It's not a self-striping sock yarn. Um, it is going to have some chance of pooling. So, so it is kind of like a mini stripe. Um, it'll be turn out more variegated. It is not self-striping. I don't do self-striping sock yarn. Oh. So, and like this is, oh, and there's also gray merino silk and buoy. So this is the super fine merino silk. So it dyes a little bit differently on each fiber base. That's just how life is. Um, different fibers have different affinities for dyes. Uh, the light reflects off the fibers in different ways and changes how we perceive color. Um, But if you search for Tour de Fleece on my website, all of those will show up as the 2020 pre-order.
And it seems like the lag monster is strengthening, so I'm trying to do whatever I can on my side to reduce the lag. I am going to stop and restart the stream and see if I can improve things. So don't worry, I'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's see if this helps. At least according to everything on my end, it says it's better. Um, so let's see how long this lasts. Oh, there's the rest. Tortoise. You got a charka? What kind of charka did you get? I've never managed to really get along with charkas. I know people who love them. I, for me, I think it's uh, the ergonomics of it just does not work for me for some reason. And I can't sit, like, traditionally you're supposed to be sitting on the floor, and I can't sit on the floor without my legs going numb. So. So I'm updating, <laughs> I'm looking at what orders have come through today. Um, because I sell on both my own website and Etsy, um, and I don't want to pay somebody else like $100 a month to sync between the two, um, I have to manually sync the inventory between my website and Etsy. So I'm taking a look just to see what's sold to make sure that nothing that's like I only have one left of um, has sold today. So, which something that I only had one of did sell, so.
That is a great deal on a book, Sharka. Um, let me know if you have any trouble with it because it can be a little bit fussy to fine tune um, and get working smoothly. And there's some pretty easy things to do to get them working smoothly. Um, I've had a couple book sharkers, like I have seriously given them a decent chance. Um, <laughs> I think I've owned about three book sharkas. Um, I don't owe any anymore. I own a banjo sharka from Japan, which I do like. Um, I just, I need to make some spindles for it because it only came with like one spindle. Um, and so I need Nick to get his 3D printer working <laughs> so that I can make some of my own spindles because we need the little whirl where the drive band attaches. Oh, come on. Synergy Fiber Club is four ounces every three months. It's not even as much commitment as Cotton Club, which is four ounces every two months. Pretty sure, Dave, you can do four ounces in every three months, and that's why my Fiber Clubs aren't every month. Okay, because I don't want to give anybody the obligation to spend four ounces of fiber a month. So the Synergy Fiber Club that Dave is talking about, um, it is me playing around with blends um, every quarter. It used to be comb top. Uh, things changed with the mill, so it wasn't easy to do small batches of comb top anymore, of custom blended comb top. So now I've been switching to hand carded bats. Um, and so I play along with, you know, fiber percentages and combining different stuff kind of walk you through it um, along with creating pretty bats for you to spend um, oh Meredith Meredith you can spend four ounces of bats every three months I know you can uh, And it seems I'm back to lagging, so. Um, so what I'm going to do to try to combat the lag again, um, I'm going to restart my phone and see if I can get it to um, behave better. Okay, so I will be back. Give me like a minute or so. Okay, I'm giving this one more try. If we start lagging again, I'm going to switch to a new live stream on the YouTube channel. Uh, using the webcam on my laptop and hopefully that will behave a lot better. Um, it's been a learning experience. So...
anybody still around? So how may I entertain Meredith and Gabriella? I am so glad I'm not saving this to the channel at the end of the day. So Gabriella, if you don't know, 12 Foot Dave is actually Meredith. She is hiding. Why didn't Dave ply last night? What, who, what was he supposed to be plying? Okay. Yeah, he definitely should have been playing. I am getting notices of lag again. So what we are going to do, since there's the whole like, well, there are five of you. Um, I'm ending this stream and I will be starting a new one that'll use the webcam on my laptop. It means it will be a little bit janky for walking around the studio, <laughs> but I will bring the studio to you. Um, and I'll be sending out a new um, link. But if you just hang around on YouTube, it should pop up with a new live stream. Okay, guys? Thank you so much for your patience. I'll be back in just